All right, you've just installed the uh, Z1, you've installed the Air Assist, and now it's time to get ready to burn something. Open up Lightburn. They give you a 30-day trial to make sure everything is compatible with your laser. So find my laser, click on Next. If that's the laser, click on Add Device. Click on Next. Rename it whatever you want. Click Next. Front left is your origin. Click on Next. And finish. And there you go, your device is now connected. If for whatever reason Lightburn can't find your laser, you can always add it in manually. So go to Devices, Create Manually, click on GRBL, click Next, Serial USB, Next, name it, whatever you want. For X axis, it's 380. Assuming you install the Air Assist, then you will lose 20 millimeter. For Y axis, you don't lose anything, it's still 400. Click on Next. Front left is your home. Click Next. And then you'll finish. Click OK. I only have one COM port right now, so it's COM20. If you have a bunch of COM ports, maybe Lightburn doesn't know which COM port to choose. So go ahead and open up Device Manager by Window X and then choose Device Manager. Go down to Ports and you should see something about USB Serial CH something something. Choose that one. For me, I have COM20 and that's why I have COM20 here. Let's open up something. My son loves Bakugan, the TV show or whatchamacallit. I don't know. I don't know these things. Let's just open up an image. Control O to open. Click on All Supported. Here's a funky logo. Looking on the right hand side, you can see that this is Layer C00. You can rename the layer by double clicking on it, but we're not going to rename it for now. See right here, the mode is image because you imported an image. To preview what it will look like when you print or laser engrave it, hold down Alt P or go to this icon right here. Personally, I prefer keyboard shortcuts, so I'm going to do Alt P. You can maximize it if you want, and then you'll see that this is a uh, image, right? If you hit play, it will do like a preview of where the lasers will go. This whole project, assuming if I go and hit the uh, start button, then it will take about 30 minutes. I don't like printing an image. I prefer vectors for easier manipulation and it's even crispier, I believe. So for the image that you just import, right click on it and then go down to trace image. You can maximize it if you want. Play around with the slider so that you'll get the, uh, the vector output of it. You'll see that the purple line comes in once it's uh, done with the tracing. And I usually delete the image after the trace. So click on OK. There you go. It did a pretty good trace, right? Except for this edges right here, which we can just delete and then add our own circle. When you select it, all of it is being selected right now. All of them are together. You can control U to ungroup it. Now you can delete the mess where it could not trace successfully due to the image. Highlight whatever you want to delete and then click on Delete. Now click on this circle tool and draw your own circle. If you want a perfect circle, hold down Shift. Use your thumb wheel to go up or down to zoom in and zoom out. If you have a nice mouse, you'll have a middle button. I'm using a Diadesso T40. It has a middle button on it. So hold down the middle button will let you pan around. Go back to select mode. You can delete whatever you want. Highlight it and then hit delete as before. I'm not going to delete anything now. In fact, let's go back a little bit. I'm just going to delete the circle that I just made. I'm going to highlight everything 
and then group it. You'll see why in a minute, okay? Now when I select something, the whole thing is selected, you see? Next, let's draw the circle back again. Hold down Shift to make a perfect circle. The logo doesn't look right because it's not aligned with the circle that we just drew. So now I'm going to select everything. Hitting Escape, Control A to select everything, and then Alt Home to align everything. Or you can always go to here, go to Align, Align Centers, which is Alt Home. Right now the mode is Fill, so it will fill in all of the shapes that's there. Let's Alt P to see what it looks like. Pretty good, right? Much, much better than the image mode before. If you wanted to cut, then go to mode and then fill and then line. You can see that it's totally different. It's no longer fill, but it would go around in lines. Line mode is pretty good for when you want to cut something. Fill mode is when you just want to quote unquote print something. Here you can see the speed and the power as well. Double click on it to change it. So we're building a fence, okay? And we want these logo, these Bakugan logos to be on a fence post. We're going to choose mode, fill. The fence is made out of um, treated wood. This is the engraving parameters that I got online directly from Comcro. We're using wood board, so the power should be 100. The speed should be 5,000. So we should change the speed and the power according to their um, suggested value. Double click on it. The speed is fine at 5,000. The maximum power will be 100. Click OK. Let's click on Preview one more time. Alt P before we do anything. Looks good. I'm going to group everything together. Control A, Control G. If you want to rotate, now's the time to do it. Just in case your bore, your wood bore, is in a different orientation when you actually lay the laser onto it. If you want to change the dimension of the logo, change it here. You'll see that this is locked, meaning if I change this value, the width, then the height will adjust as well. For fun, let's change it to 90 millimeter. And there you are. You can see the height change accordingly as well. My bed, you can see that it's from 0 to 380 because we have the air assist. The Y axis we have from 0 to 400. That's good. I like to print with absolute control, meaning if I put it here, then it will print directly in the center of the printer. If I move the logo down to this position, then when the laser fires up, it will print directly into this position right here. When everything is looking good, go ahead and click on frame. Frame gives you a preview of where the laser will be going all around the borders of your logo. So if my logo is here, when I click on frame, the laser should go up here, go over, Go up, go over, and go down to let you know that the laser will be shooting in this area of the bed. You can always change the position in greater detail by clicking on it and then manually change the coordinates right here, the Y and X position right here. Double check again and again is my suggestion and then click on start if you are satisfied with the uh, preview. This is my setup on my deck right now because my garage is a total mess. I'm going to clean up the garage and put the laser engraver there. But for now, we're on the deck. We're on the deck with the laptop, with the laser engraver, with the board, with plenty of air because you definitely don't want to do this indoor in your house without any ventilation whatsoever. My setup looks really messy and I hate it. For my next video, I'm going to show you how to do it with a Raspberry Pi. But right now, I don't have any Raspberry Pi on hand. So if you have any Raspberry Pi on hand and that you're not using, I would love to have it. I tried with a Raspberry Pi Zero and it was super slow. Meaning, instead of having the laptop connected to this laser engraver, I have the Raspberry Pi Zero connected to it. The Raspberry Pi is set up as Octoprint. That's right, the same thing for your 3D printer. But sadly, the only thing I have is a Raspberry Pi Zero and it's just too slow, inadequate. I would need at least a Raspberry Pi 3. How would I connect the Raspberry Pi to this laser engraver? It's actually not bad at all. All you have to do is loosen up these four screws. One, two, three, four. And then slide this cover down. This is the controller of the engraver. This is where you will plug in the uh, USB to your Raspberry Pi. 
This is 24 volts, by the way. Oh, it's even labeled here as well, 24 volt. I didn't see that earlier. But you will convert the 24 volts using a buck converter, convert it down into 5 volts. The 5 volt will then feed into the Raspberry Pi 3. The Raspberry Pi 3 and the buck converter will go into this position right here. I have a bunch of electrical boxes that I can always mount one in here. That way you'll never see any mess like this. And the bonus benefit is that I can always turn it on remotely, start the print remotely. And just in case there's an emergency, I can always turn it off remotely as well. All right, no more talk. I hope this tutorial helps you with your first engraving or cutting. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel and thanks for watching.